Hi, my name is Ria and I have a degree in chemical engineering and today I'm here to learn more about materials engineering and how it pertains to our industry. Hi, my name is Chris. I have a PhD in materials engineering and after 25 years I practice electrical, chemical and mechanical engineering and I've been a founder on multiple products in my career. So Ria, how long have you been in applied materials and what do you know about materials engineering? So it's been about two months for me and I really like it here. Um, for materials engineering, I do have some industry experience with it, so I do have some understanding of it, but I still would love to learn about the big picture of why materials engineering is so important to our society today. So materials engineering is so vital to our modern society. Imagine you have an illness, an MRI can be used to diagnose, robotic surgery can help minimize side effects, and like a 3D prosthesis can be custom printed for you. Electronics is everywhere in our modern society and we just take it for granted. Why do you think that integrated circuit chips have evolved to become so powerful? For five decades, the semiconductor industry has relentlessly developed technologies around increasing computing power. The transistor, which is a switch that controls the flow of electricity, is the fundamental building block of electronics. Integrations of millions and billions of transistors within a single chip allows us to invent amazing things. After five decades of relentlessly doing this, we're pushing against the limit of physics. That's where materials engineering and applied materials expertise comes in. So materials engineering is able to engineer materials, um, sometimes at an atomic level to make them smaller and faster. Yeah, it takes a village of many engineering disciplines to achieve this. From software engineers, to mechanical, to electrical engineering and physics, we build sophisticated equipment that controls chemical reactions, wafer movements and energy sources. So as a materials engineer, how do you engineer different materials so it has the properties that you need? Materials engineers use three main types of properties to engineer performance, atomic composition, the structure, and the synthesis method. Can you give me some examples on how structure and composition affects materials and their properties? Sure, so silicon germanium is a material that we use to make a transistor. It's created by delivering gaseous chemical species that arrive at a hot surface and they match the same repeating atom positions. This is structure. We do this at incredible levels of perfection to minimize defects. You can imagine building like a Lego Millennium Falcon and you get one attempt to put every block in the correct spot in the first time. We also control positive stress on the device with the percentage of germanium in a silicon germanium alloy. This is atomic composition engineering. Both structure and atomic composition control the overall chip and device performance. So that's incredible. Transistors have hundreds of thousands of atoms that need precise control of processing. How do we control the properties of these critical materials? Integrated circuits cannot achieve supercomputer level performance without materials engineering driving both the physical and the electrical properties. We need highly sophisticated equipment to control the chemicals, the gases, wafer temperature, plasma species energy, for example to engineer accurate and repeatable materials so the first transistor and the billionth transistor have the same characteristics. Wow, so whatever the semiconductor industry dreams up, whether it's the next phone or the next medical device, it seems that applied materials is the foundation of all this exciting technology. Um, I'd really like to thank you, Chris, for your time today. I've learned so much from you and it's been a pleasure for sure. Thank you.